Hi guys, this is Abhi from Engineering Master. Welcome to the another episode of Engineering Master. Electrical engineering interviews are a very tough subject. Many of us are confused what to study and where to study. This video series will help you to prepare for the electrical engineering job interviews in better way. I have prepared this interview question based on my 15 years of experience in MEP construction field in different roles as electrical engineer, as MEP engineer and as a project manager. I used to ask this question in interviews for the hiring process and some questions was asked to me in the interviews also. Let's go to the video. Brief the basic structure of power distribution in a high rise building. If you are applying for a position in construction field, you have to face this question in some time in your career. The form may be slightly varied but the content will be same. The basic structure of a power distribution in a high rise building. Let's look at very quickly. So this is the basic structure of a power distribution for a high rise building. You can see power is coming to the substation from outside. The substation may be internal or it may be the substation which is situated outside the premises of the project. Then there will be a generator. From substation and generator, the power is flowing through LV panel through ATS. LV panel to sub main distribution board. Then SMDB, sub main distribution board to flat DBs or final distribution boards. This is a block diagram of a typical residential building, high rise building. This ATS and LV panel will be situated in main electrical room or LV room. It may be either in first basement or in the ground floor. SMDBs will be situated in the respective electrical rooms in the different different floors. Then flat DBs you know it will be placed inside the flat. The power flow will be substation or generator through ATS going LV panel. Then there will be an electrical room in all the floors in a typical high rise residential building. So it is going to SMDB which is situated in the electrical room. Then going to the flats or apartments. The next question is what is the first electrical activity in a construction site for a high rise building project. If it's entirely new project if you are starting from the scratch then the first activity will be announce the construction power for the construction activities or we call as a temporary power. So we have to arrange a temporary power and site office for the people to work there. If it's a high rise building project the next activity will be the lightning and earthing works. So we have to finalize the lightning and earthing production vendors materials etc then the first activity shall be lightning production works because it's normally doing below the plinth or below the raft another activity parallel to earthing and lightning production will be some conducting works for some pump some small columns walls etc this is a sample picture for the lightning production earth mat or foundation earthing on the raft or plinth if there is no space for the earthing so what we have to do we have to create earth pit in the basement or ground floor itself. In that case, this will be the structure. It's called flange type earth pits. That is also an interview question. They will ask if there is no space in the project, where will we provide earthing? Flange type earthing also you need to study while going to the interview. What is MCB, MCCB and ACB? What is the difference between them and where it is used? I have covered this subject in a detailed video. I will provide the link in the description box. You can watch that. MCB full form is miniature circuit breakers. It's range between 5 to 100 amps. It is used in the final distribution board or the distribution board inside your villas and apartments. MCCB, MCCB is molded case circuit breaker. It's range between 15 to 630 amps. It's used in the sub main distribution boards or the distribution boards inside the electrical rooms. It's more in industrial use. What is the difference between MCB and MCCB? In MCCB, the trip time and current can be adjusted. In MCB, this is not possible. ACB range between 800 amps to 10 K amps or 10 kilo amps. It is used as an incomer for LV panels. The full form is air circuit breaker. Air is used to quench the arc produced due to the ionization. What is form 4 panel? Is LV panel form 2 or form 4? If you face this question, what should be your answer? Answer is LV panel is form 4. Form 4 panel means bus bars are segregated from functional units and terminals. Functional units are segregated from each other. LV panel there are three parts. One is functional units. Functional units mean your breakers. Other one is terminal. Terminal is where we connect the cable. In a breaker we have to connect the cable right. Terminal is a place where we connect the cable in the panel. Bus bar is a copper bar. Between the breaker and output terminal there will be a bus bar. Current is carrying through the bus bar to the breaker and out of the breaker. There are form 2, form 3, form 4 panels. In form 4 type panels there is a partition between bus bar and the functional unit. Consider this is a functional unit. 
there is a partition between bus bar and the functional unit and the functional unit and the terminals then bus bar and the terminals also segregated by a partition so basically all three bus bars functional units and the terminals are situated in different different cubicles this type of low voltage panel construction or lv panel construction is called form 4 we will do a detailed video regarding the lv panel construction and different forms of the lv panel normally in the interviews this question is asked what is the form of an lv panel have you used bus bar what is bus bar ranking how to order bus bar if you are going for a high rise building project this 100 percent sure that there will be a question from bus bar ranking system or bus bar system bus bar ranking system or bus bar system is a system of distributing electric power using copper or aluminium bus bar with suitable enclosures and good amount of protection to prevent the cables from getting damaged due to foreign bodies so basically instead of cables we will use copper bars or aluminium bar with the proper insulation this will reduce the number of cables and it requires less space this is a picture of a bus bar ranking system you can see from the lv panel bus bar is going to the top floors or respective floors how to order a bus bar first you have to finalize a supplier or the specialist manufacturer ask the supplier or ask the manufacturer to prepare the shop drawings or isometric drawings for the bus bar what they will do they will take the site measurement and based on that they will prepare a shop drawings then after the shop drawing approval order the bus bar keeping end piece on hold means the last piece which is connecting to the lv panel or which is situated in the transfer from horizontal to vertical direction or vertical to horizontal direction you keep that piece on hold then order all the pieces and install all the pieces after installation of remaining bus bar call the supplier again and ask them to take the site measurement for this connection piece if you are not doing this exercise you will face the problems in connecting the bus bar with lv panel or vertical to horizontal transfer or horizontal to vertical transfer the supplier will take the site measurement for end pieces and they will provide the bus bar with exact measurement this should be in mind while ordering the bus bar ranking system what is two way switch draw one lamp controlled by a two way switch if you are applying for a junior position or the position which requires experience less than 5 years you will definitely face this question this question is normally is asked to a fresher two way switch means there are two switches controlling same light or same load we have covered this chapter in detail in our switches video i will provide the link in description box please watch that you will get more understanding about all the switches you have to draw this drawing instead of switch you can provide switch symbol for understanding purpose i am keeping the original switch so the line is coming to the common and l1 of the first switch connected to l2 of the second switch then l2 of the first switch connected to l1 of the second switch then next common is going to the light then the light neutral is coming so this is a typical drawing of a two way switch what is dp switch where is it used this also we have covered in detail in our switches video please watch that video also double pole switch or dp switch it's a switch that controls two circuit at same time in terms of residential switching this normally means it switches the live and neutral at the same time so it can control two circuit or phase and neutral at same time normally in sp switches only phase will come in dp switches phase and neutral will come so this is a front and back side of a dp switch you can see front side is similar to the normal switch the back side there will be four terminals in sp switch there will be two terminals in dp switch there will be four terminals it is generally used in household electrical equipment or kitchen equipment such as fridge washing machine etc water heaters also it will switch the phase and neutral at same time what is one gang and two gang switch gang describes the number of switches on a plate a one gang switch will control a single lighting circuit and with a two gang switch you can control two lighting circuits this is picture of one gang and two gang switch basically in a switch place if one switch is there it is called one gang two switches there it's called two gang like this three gang and four gang switches are also available in the market what is ring circuit how many sockets or outlets in a ring circuit in electrical supply design a ring circuit is an electrical wiring technique in which sockets and the distribution points are connected in a ring so there are two forms of wiring one is radial form another one is ring form in radial form wires which are coming from the burkers is going to the sockets and after looping one or two sockets it will end there in ring circuit 
after looping the sockets the wire the face wire and neutral wire is coming back to the breaker and the neutral bus bar a circuit arranged in the form of ring and connected to a single point of supply is called ring circuit as per the regulation basically in middle east there is a strict regulation regarding the ring circuit as per the deva regulation dubai electrical and water authority regulation if the number of switch socket outlets is more than 5 in a circuit then the ring circuit shall be used a ring circuit can connect 10 switched socket outlets controlled by a 30 amp circuit breaker this is a regulation from dubai electrical and water authority what they are saying in a loop if the number of socket are exceeding 5 then we have to use ring circuit and the breaker size shall be 30 amp circuit breaker maximum socket which can be connected in a ring circuit is 10 if you are applying for a position in a middle east this question will come in the interviews this is a photo of a ring circuit you can see line which is going to the sockets after looping individual socket is coming back to the breaker neutral also same earth also same so this circuit is in the form of a circle or a ring this is called ring circuit if you are applying a position in middle east this question will come definitely in the interviews what are the different types of electrical conduits normally used normally we are using two types of conduits first one is gi galvanized iron conduit second one is pvc conduit is a plastic conduit pvc conduit also we can classified into three heavy mechanical stress hms conduit which is thicker and it can sustain more mechanical stress medium mechanical stress mms conduit light mechanical stress lms conduits conduits for exposed underground below floor as is slab and concealed in walls shall be hms conduits hms conduit shall be used for slab conduits in underground exposed installations in common language it is also called heavy duty conduit apart from this there are a variety of conduits available in the market but we are not using it in common cases for the special project we may use but in normal projects we will use two types only gi and pvc gi conduits is normally used in exposed installation normally in the parkings inside the shaft etc what is the difference between space and spare in a load schedule this is also a middle east interview questions if you are looking for a job in gcc countries then you should know the answer of this question spare means spare breakers the physical spare breakers will be there in the distribution boards if there is a spare in the load schedule we can see a spare breaker which has input but it is not connected to any load it's a spare in load schedule load will be considered for the spare for example if you are adding a spare breaker in the load schedule we will add a spare load for that next one is space space there won't be any breakers in the db in the load schedule if you see a space there won't be any physical breakers in the db but the space for expansion will be there there will be some space left for the future mcb or future breaker to install if you look at a deva load schedule dubai electrical and water authority load schedule this is a load schedule from my previous project you can see in upper portion spare is there in spare they have entered the load 200 watts we have considered for this spare breaker breaker size is 10 amps in below portion you can see space in mcb rating column it's nil that means there is no mcb for the space load also not entered in the load schedule there is a provision to connect future mcb but this not considered in the load schedule this is a space provision what is the allowable voltage drop in a cable answer is 4 percentage of the normal voltage the allowable voltage drop in a cable is 4 percentage of the nominal voltage what is the nominal voltage assume nominal voltage is 440 volt then 4 percentage of the 440 volt that will be 17.6 volts that is the maximum allowable voltage drop in a cable you can see the deva regulation the maximum voltage drop from the point of supply to any point or equipment appliances and apparatus connected in the wiring installation shall not exceed 4 percentage of the nominal voltage of the electric supply unless otherwise specified so our maximum voltage drop limit is 4 percentage of the nominal voltage another one is megger what is megger where is it used you will face this question if we are looking for an installation or execution side engineer answer is a megger meter is a tool that is used to measure insulation resistance is a tool like multimeter it is used to measure the insulation resistance what is the significance of insulation resistance it is used for the checking of cables and bus bar insulations if some new material is coming to the project we will do the measuring of cables or bus bar first it's a part of acceptance test what is clamp meter 
Clammeter is an electrical testing tool that integrates a basic digital multimeter with a current sensor. Clamp measures current, probe measures voltage. Basically, it's a combination of multimeter and a current sensor. It can measure both voltage and current. It can directly clamp to the live circuit. So this is a photo of a clamp meter. If you press this lever, this will fall apart. So this can be used to clamp in a live wire. Then probes is also there to measure the voltage. This is a way of measuring current using a clamp meter. Just clamp the meter on the live wire. The advantage is we don't need to disconnect and measure. Just clamp it on the live wire, you can see the current. What is the distance between LV panel and wall? This also predominantly asked in GCC interview questions. In other countries also, if someone asks this question, you can tell this answer. Answer is minimum clearance shall be 750 mm on the back side, 1500 mm or 1.5 meter on the front side, 750 mm or 75 centimeter on the sides. This is also a picture taken from Deva regulations. You can see the back side 0.75 meter that is 750 mm on the side 0.75 meter that is also 750 mm. In the front side you can see 1.5 meter or 1500 mm. The minimum distance between LV panel and capacitor bank is 100 mm. What is UPS? What is the difference between inverter and UPS? Answer is a UPS is a backup system that provides power in the event of utility or power failure. We all know UPS is for the power backup. In case of power failure, we will get the power from the UPS. Inverter main function is to convert DC power to AC power. The main difference between inverter and UPS is UPS immediately switch over. Inverter take time. So in case of power failure, in UPS, the power supply will be uninterrupted. If you put on the light, there will not be any blinking. That means immediate switching over from main power to UPS supply. But inverter, it takes time. So in some cases, sensitive equipment will turn off then on. It will be off then it will restart like that. Apart from this, there are a lot of difference between UPS and inverter. But the main difference is this. You can answer to the interviewer in this way. The another one is describe about transformer earthing and what to be earthed. This is also a common question in interviews. How to do a transformer earthing? As per Indian Electricity Rules 1956, transformer bodies shall be double earth and they shall be connected to two separate and independent earth electrodes. Transformer neutral shall be double earth and they shall be connected to two separate and independent earth electrodes. That is, as per Indian Electricity Rules 1956, there are two types of earthing required for the transformer. First one is body earthing that we know transformer body shall be earth. That is very common practice for the all the equipments. Then the second one is transformer neutral shall be double earth. Two earth pits required for the transformer body and two earth pits with separate electrodes required for the neutral earthing. For a single transformer there are four earth pits, two for body, two for neutral. What is standby generator? And what is the difference between prime and standby generators? We know in the Middle East and some buildings in India, we will use a standby generators as a backup for the project. What is standby generator? If the generator is used as a backup for main power supply, it is called standby generator. Prime generator means the generator used as a primary power source. In normal cases, our primary power source shall be the supply from the power supply company or the power supply provider. In case we are using generator as a primary power supply, then it is called prime generator. In some high luxury projects, some clients will insist, I don't need standby generator, I need prime generator as a backup. So this is an exceptional case. In general cases, standby generator is for the backup, the prime generator is for the primary power source. What is your role as an electrical engineer in the current company? This will be the first or second questions. You should be prepared for the answer. Answer depends on your job role in the current company. If you are a designer, you can describe the designing process and your contribution to the designing process. In execution side, you can answer in that way. Basically, the focus should be on your contribution to the team and the project. You should be prepared for this question in all the interviews. This will be a sure shot. That's it guys, I am ending the session. We will continue the session in the coming videos. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.